Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Thank you for joining me for this continuing discussion on 30 reasons for being Muslim. Today I want to look at the fact that uh, the Islamic prayer, the Salat, uh, molds our character and gives us structure so that our life uh, re revolves around it and it's a life of uh, progress uh, and character forming and building. My good reason for being a Muslim today is that uh, when we pray, as Muslims do, our character gets uh, improved and uh, we have structure and balance in our life so that everything falls into, into place. Let's look at the broader picture to see where the problem lies. Uh, we, we, we often notice that people who uh, pray do not seem to be getting anything out of their prayer. I mean, we might, might expect that one who is praying and communicating regularly with God should be like people of the best character. We expect this of the priests, the imams, uh, the clergy in general. Uh, that they should be the best uh, people to be around. Uh, and, and yet we see sometimes that some of the worst stories of uh, abuse, uh, molestation of children and so on, come from the direction of the clergy. So what went wrong? Something is not going right. The prayer does not seem to be doing for people what it should be doing. It's not molding the character of the individuals. How does Islam come in to solve this uh, problem? Well, we see that the uh, Muslim prayer actually does have uh, a, a, an effect on the Muslim character uh, if it is done right. The Quran itself says in the, in the 29th surah, in the 45th uh, verse, Inna salata tanha anil fashai wal munkar. The, uh, certainly prayer prevents a person from uh, evils and from disagreeable acts. So how could one do the prayers right to make sure uh, that they give us this uh, outcome? Or how is that outcome achieved? Well, it is achieved in the following way. You see, the, the Muslim prayer involves uh, a number of steps uh, that, that, that would lead to the prayer itself. First, one has to make sure that one's uh, body is clean and uh, one's clothing is clean, one's environment is clean. So uh, with this kind of prepar preparedness to think about the prayer before we actually get into the prayer, it's not like we're, you know, we're thinking, okay, let's go to church and we're getting our Sunday best. What's going to look good today? Uh, it, the, the Muslim has a, a further consideration of making sure uh, that the clothing itself is free of defilement. So that takes a little bit of uh, focus and, and uh, attention to, to the clothing. Next, thinking about uh, the environment where we're going to pray. Let's say we're praying at home or we happen to be praying in a field or in a park, uh, in a park then uh, we want to make sure that the place that we're going to pray in, this is a pl place that is free of uh, defilement. So we're, we're thinking of sacred space here. We're thinking of carving out a little space from within the, the wider environment uh, that is clean and that is wholesome where we can uh, focus on things uh, divine. And now uh, we want to think about the body as well. The human body has to be cleansed as well. So now obviously what is most important here is that the mind has to be cleansed, but there is a mind-body connection. And uh, Muslims by cleansing their bodies uh, are also at the same time cleansing their minds. So how do we cleanse our bodies uh, before going into prayer? Well, there is an idea of a major state of defilement and a, and a minor sta state of defilement. So the major state of defilement is what occurs uh, with major acts, uh, let's say uh, intimate uh, acts. As a result of that, one would have to uh, take a complete uh, bath. And what, what does that do? It, because you see, such acts uh, would weigh heavily on the mind of a person. It has an effect on our mind. And then when we take this shower, we, we feel refreshed, like we feel we're ready now to talk to God. We were in a state uh, in which we, we don't feel ready. And now we feel so ready. Uh, after after the shower. And and then there's that state of minor defilement that occurs, like, for example, when a person answers the call of uh, nature. So it is natural that uh, that will leave some uh, effect on our, on our minds. Uh, we, we don't feel like, you know, we're in the best state uh, now. But when we do some washings, uh, naturally everybody will wash their hands, uh, you know, to stay away from germs and all of that. But a Muslim goes more extensively, washing the face, washing the arms up to the elbows. By washing the extremity, uh, extremities of one's body uh, like, like this, one is then in, in a better prepared uh, situation to have a, a deep and intimate conversation with God. By washing the limbs of our bodies, we believe that we're washing away the sins from our bodies. We're cleansing ourselves and we are getting ready uh, to have this deep conversation with God. So with all of this preparedness now in terms of the cleanliness of the clothing, the environment, the body, 
uh, now we, we, our mental state is already like, you know, we, we've gone through all of this warm up exercise. And now after the prayer itself, there is a cooling down because uh, now we've just finished doing the prayer and we're thinking that before long, the next prayer will occur. We might go back to our work and study and daily activities, uh, uh, you know, as normal uh, and everybody else. Uh, but uh, we know that before long, another prayer will occur. And so we cannot do something uh, that will defile us uh, because we want to keep the state of purity to be ready for the next prayer. And of course, uh, you know, certain acts are uh, legitimate and lawful in our religion, so we can do those if we need to. And then we can just renew uh, the ablutions or, or the washings. But uh, certain acts are illegitimate, they're prohibited, they're haram. And so we cannot even think of doing those because the effect that that will leave in our minds uh, will not actually be washed away with just simply the, the shower or the ablutions. No, we will get into the next prayer and we are thinking, you know, oh man, what did I do? I really messed up today. I did this uh, major sin. Of course, that will be a perfect time to feel repentant and to ask God for forgiveness. But in the first place, we don't want to be doing the sins and then going into the, into the next prayer. We want to get into the next prayer. And for that reason, we want to avoid all of the sins in, in between prayers. And so the prayer tends to mold our character. And so the verse of the Quran, Surah 29, verse number 45, which says, in the salat tanha anil fashai wa munkar, does actually find its fulfillment in the lives of Muslims in that by preparing for prayer and feeling the after effects of prayer, we stay away from sins. This to me is an excellent reason for being Muslim. How does that make uh, us better persons and the world a better place? Well, of course, naturally, if we are able to stay away from sins, then uh, that makes us better people. And uh, if we avoid some of these heinous crimes like child molestation and rape and adultery and so on, we make the world a better, a safer place, safer for children, safer for women, safer for the elderly, safer for everybody around us. Thank you for joining me for this uh, discussion on 30 reasons for being Muslim. Tomorrow, another reason. Join me then, please. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. We're taking Let the Quran Speak to the next level by establishing the Muslim Media Hub. This Ramadan, please support us to help us get this project off the ground. Please visit QuranSpeaks.com.